Hello there folks, Kirk here, Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today, this is not real uncommon, they built this uh, laundry room. So we are, of course, lapping it up. Key things to remember, if you're going to do the paper wire on something like this, you have to remove part of the deck so we can get down below. Our drip screen has got to be past the mud seal. Remember, water goes through the stucco, lands on this paper, and then it, when it lands on this paper, it drips, follows the paper down, it drips out the drip screen. That's how it's got its name, drip screen or weep screen. So I'm at the stage right now where I'm caulking tape. And I use this uh, polyurethane caulking. 20 different brands, I just prefer Cicaflex. We caulk around all of these openings, especially scuppers, lights, uh, electrical panels, underneath the door, the threshold. We're gonna caulk that. A fella asked me, can you roll the wire out and put it either way? The wire goes on one way. When you roll it out, you put it on that way so it kind of curves this way because this is self-furred wire, which means if you push the paper in, it pulls out about a quarter inch. So it acts somewhat like Dobie's does for concrete lifting the rebar. So that's real important. All right, guys. Now what we're doing is brown coat. I'm Darby in it because it works out well. Darby has a handle missing. I specifically took it off to get behind all this work here. We got three feet under the deck. We got all these ledgers to get around, all these rails to get around. So I had to take the handle off to go in back. So to continue on my merry way, I'm putting another coat on. As I brown, take it off the trowel. Come on and notice I don't drop a lot of mud, unlike some folks, because when I put it on here, I put it in the middle there. I don't know if you can see that right there. But I leave two to three inches on each side. Do the whole thing like this, I would drop a lot because it would spill. So, anyway, back to what I'm doing. And when I do tops, I pull it off the top, get it here, squish it up there. Take it off there, squish it up for the top. And I just keep moving along here. Putting a lot here because I want to float it. They have a very light dash finish, or you can go with a heavy float. Because their light thrown on dash has been painted, oh, 25 times, it is now similar to a heavy float. And I just keep going, just like that, keep burying the wire up, like that. There. My buddy Javier is doing the other side there. Javier has been with me all 30 years. He's the best. Best hot care, best lather, best plaster I ever met. Jason is doing the filming. My brother Lou is doing the hot care in. Let me just take it right there. Take this guy right here. That's going to make it real easy when I do the heavy float finish. When I say heavy float finish, that just means I use a lot of water. And the water brings the aggregate out. Aggregate's another fancy word for sand. We're going to bring the sand out. Aggregate in this case is sand. Aggregate in concrete on the rock. Okay, I'm gonna finish this up at the top. I want to show you guys before I start floating. Sometimes on my video I'm gonna start floating without showing you that this part is absolutely necessary. Okay. Cheat a little bit here. I don't kill myself. Alright. Hold on. Hold 
off. We took it to the bottom and... All right. Now again, I, I usually have a handle here which makes it easy, but... Again, because I'm going through all the wood, don't need it. Here we go. Now, that's going to set. If the sun was on this, it'd already be set. But we're here early in the morning, trying to get a jump start so the sun doesn't beat us up also. Now that that second coat is on, I'm going to take a sponge float. And that's this guy here. I generally wear gloves that the back is open, so I never put my hand in this bucket further than this, otherwise this part gets wet. I go halfway, cap it, flip it around, halfway, cap it. Only the fingers go in that water, otherwise I'll be walking around with pruny fingers the rest of the day. And soon enough, I'm gonna float it, which means, see that? That's when you use a lot of water on the float. Just lightly hit it, lightly hit it, and that brings the aggregate out. And then, of course, I'll pick up all this wood here, like so. And I get this is not really ready to float yet. I got to give it another, I'd say, another 20 minutes, and then I'll be able to use a little bit of skill and float it up and bring the aggregate out to match the existing. This is a laundry room. They built it, it's ah, only seven feet wide by six feet on each side. Uh, just enough to stick a washer and dryer. So we get to the last stage, I'll show you. And I'll show you the final texture. And you'll see that our new texture is gonna match the other texture. Otherwise we won't get paid. All right, folks, the conclusion to this finish. This is a dash finish, a light dash. That means this is a dash brush, eight inch bristles. We dip it in cement. Now I have a bucket of cement and a bucket of water. I usually put the dash brush in the water first, then put it on here a little bit. You stick it in that bucket. I'm sure the camera doesn't show it. You stick it in the bucket there, shake off a little of the excess, and just just lightly dash it. And here's something, if you dash it too heavy, say I go like this, and I just make a mess. I take this sponge float and tap it a couple times, let it set, and then I go back over it in a few minutes. Here's my joint. See if you can catch that joint. My joint to their dash finish. When this is painted, it's going to match. The fellow who did this window, all he did was he floated it, and that's the Again, I don't know if the camera will show that, but he just floated it and he didn't tie it in properly. That's why they have this huge crack that's been caulked about 10 times. My son just pointed out, he said, well, Dad, look at this, what they did over here. Now this, I guess this has been done 10 years ago, five, I don't know. But what they did here is the original finish is a dash and they just put it on and they floated it. So they avoided dashing it, which that takes an extra, for this little uh, addition here, maybe it take me an extra hour. But the difference is, when this fella, who's a licensed contractor in Alameda, needs somebody else, usually calls me because we do it right. Well, thanks for listening. Hope you learned something on this one. Kirk with Kirk Giordano Plastering. For those of you who want to do it but simply don't know how, this will give you an idea. It won't make you a pro, but it'll give you an idea. Thank you, Jason, for taking the video. We'll see you on the next one. Thank you.